there in the center of your screen. Dragon capsule, awaiting for the fast boats to approach and begin the rigging process. And there on the left-hand side of your screen, we can see that second fast boat come into view. Dragon SpaceX, we are go for recovery personnel to approach. Expect personal, personnel aside, alongside in just under a minute. Dragon copies, thank you. All right, so they're starting to move in. As Kate just said, that first boat's gonna go in, sniff around the capsule for any traces of hypergalls. The second one's gonna start rounding up the parachutes, uh, which we're getting some really cool views from the WV-57 still flying overhead. Uh, looking down, you can see the parachutes in the water and the second boat start to gather them up. Uh, we'll try one more time real quick. Uh, we have NASA's Brandy Dean out with the recovery forces. Brandy, if you can hear me, what was it like to watch this dragon come down under parachutes? Oh, it was amazing. I wish everybody could have had my view. It was such a beautiful sight. It was a gorgeous day. The water is calm, really the best weather we could have asked for um, and we did we heard the um, the sonic booms as it made its way back and we were able to find it early on as the parachutes were deploying so it's very exciting for everybody who was gathered here that's incredible we actually had some questions from people if you'd be able to hear the sonic boom and we weren't sure so i'm really glad you just answered that for us um i mean we talked so much about the weather you said it looks great what I mean, what was it like on the ride out there? Has it just been kind of clear skies and clear seas the whole way? I'm not sure if you can hear me right now, um, but I think you're asking about the weather, whether it was clear skies. There are just a, kind of a circle of clouds along the horizon, very low, but um, the, the, we were able to see the parachute far above the clouds and then follow it all the way until it's west down. All right, well, we're not getting any views on the boat, so what kind of activity is taking place right now? We're able to see the fast boats approaching the capsule. Uh, what's everybody doing on the boat to just kind of get everything ready? Uh, the boat's also making its way towards the capsule. I can't see it with my rear with my eyes, but yeah, but we're getting closer. Um, everybody's been kind of standing by, um, holding ready positions for quite a while now, so as soon as it as soon as the flash, they'll be able to just sit in um, and start working on their own, their own activities. All right, copy that. Well, we're going to keep watching from here. Um, thanks for calling in, and thanks for being out there with everybody and getting us these great views. It's really incredible. Uh, thanks, Brandy. We hope to get you back in port soon, uh, and we'll talk to you back in Houston. So there on your screen, uh, ooh, camera view change. That is a view coming to us from Go Navigator, the recovery vessel. Uh, the two fast boats are out there getting to getting ready to uh, basically apply, or excuse me, install the rigging equipment required to hoist the Dragon out of the water. Uh, one, the other fast boat is actually collecting the parachutes from the water. We definitely want to uh, bring those back on board with us. Uh, but shortly here, we should actually see one of the team members uh, crawl up onto the side of the capsule in order to install that, uh, install the rigging, like I, I mentioned. That particular team member is highly experienced and highly trained. As you can imagine, climbing on top of an oddly shaped thing in you know, the ocean <laughs> could be a little tricky. So uh, this person has undergone a lot, hours and hours of training and certification in order to perform this very important task. There on the right-hand side of your screen, we see the second fast boat approaching. Uh, of course, both of these boats uh, needed to wait for their cue uh, from the water recovery lead in order to approach Dragon after splashdown. Uh, again, that was just to make sure that there weren't any toxic vapors in the air. Uh, and now that they got the all clear, we do see them beginning to work uh, on and around the Dragon capsule. So even though the camera's a little shaky, uh, that water looks super, super duper uh, smooth, almost like glass, which is certainly ideal for a water recovery like today.
Yeah, got to remember that this is a view from the, the main recovery vessel, which was still a few miles away from the splashdown Dragon point. SpaceX, we have hypercrawl sweeps and unfired ordnance checks uh, nominal. Rigor is on board the vehicle about two, five minutes until capsule lift. After that, yeah, we see them uh, walking outside and uh, good news. All right, confirmation there that all of those hypergolic uh, vapor tests came out uh, positive, or rather negative, which is a positive thing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so the team was able to approach, and now the crew member that is installing the rigging is on top of the capsule. It's difficult to see there uh, because the slower vessel, that re the primary recovery ship, is a little further away. But as we heard, it's just a mere two and a half minutes until uh, they will be hoisted out of the water. Um, I'm sorry, tw 25 minutes, not... 2.5. I misheard that. Yeah. They're fast, but they're not that yeah. fast. <laughs> uh, we also have been hearing that uh, the secondary boat, which its primary mission in this case is securing those parachutes, uh, they've already got buoys attached to both droves and uh, two of the four mains and already had eyes on the other two, so they're moving through that work pretty quickly. Again, their primary responsibility, getting those parachutes together. Uh, the droves uh, detaching from the spacecraft uh, right before the deployment of the mains. The mains automatically detaching immediately as Dragon detected splashdown. Uh, all of that happening right per the timeline. Yeah, we've talked a little bit about the hardwired buttons that Bob and Doug have on their seats and in their control uh, displays and cutting the, the main chutes is one of those buttons. In the event that they weren't automatically cut after splashdown, Bob and Doug would have had uh, the ability to do so. Uh, if the winds were stronger and they caught the parachutes, it could certainly create a condition where the capsule could be moved unintentionally by those dragging parachutes. So definitely want to avoid that. So uh, that's one of the, the few buttons that are hardwired into the cabin for the crew. And again, right now we're expecting about 20 minutes uh, for the, the main recovery vessel, the GO Navigator, to reach Dragon. By that point, all the rigging will be affixed and then they'll be able to use the A-frame hydraulic lift on the, back of the, on the back of the vessel to begin to pull Dragon up out of the water. Uh, Bob and Doug did report they're seeing the guys climbing around outside their window on the capsule, mm -hmm. getting that rigging affixed. Uh, still doing good uh, from all of their reports. And we're just going to see the vessel continue to close in. It's a little over 1.3 nautical miles still away, but you can see things starting to sharpen up in our view as it does draw in closer. One thing I didn't get to mention as the sequence events was happening, everything was going so quickly, uh, just before the drogue de deployment, the seats automatically rotated to about 26 degrees. Uh, and so if you think back to when we saw Bob and Doug while they were still on orbit and during the, uh, the deorbit burn and all their departure burns, they were actually laying closer to on their backs at the 40 degree position, uh, where essentially they were looking up at the top of Dragon Capsule, like their stomachs were facing uh, the top nose cone there. At this point, the seats would have rotated, so they're in a little bit more of an upright position. Uh, that's done to ensure that um, the loads experienced from landing are, you know, don't, doesn't, doesn't hurt them. So uh, at this point, they are not really laying on their backs in the ocean. They are seated upright a little bit, which would allow them to have a better view of the team working to install the rigging equipment. So at this point, we're at about 22 minutes until Dragon will be lifted onto the recovery vessel. Bob and Doug are still strapped into their seats, kind of like an airplane. You know, they say, 
do not unbuckle your seatbelt until the captain determines that it's safe to do so. Uh, they will stay, remain in their seats throughout the entire recovery process, essentially until it's time to get them out. Like I said, we are expecting to lift Dragon onto the Go Navigator recovery ship in about 21 minutes. And then in 28 minutes, we will be opening that hatch and beginning crew egress, also known as exit. And we did hear the rigging is pretty much complete. So uh, right as they arrive there at the capsule, the main recovery vessel will be able to begin uh, getting it up out of the water. So now as the recovery vessel Go Navigator is getting closer to Dragon, Dragon's position there off the coast of Pensacola, Florida, we're able to see the capsule in a little bit more detail. Uh, it is certainly no longer a bright shade of white. <laughs> like we said, those external temperatures uh, were reaching up to 3,500 degrees Fahrenheit so the thermal protective systems, thermal protection systems, uh, enable Dragon to return while keeping the internal temperature rather temperate. And you are seeing a few more boats than expected. Um, the team's currently working uh, with a few private vessels uh, in the area, making sure that they get out of there And now we see one of the SpaceX fast boats moving in. So we are being advised that uh, the recovery team is radioing out to the vessels in the water near Crew Dragon to vacate the area uh, so that we're able to extract Bob and Doug safely. Uh, you know, also for the safety of those folks in the area as well, not just Bob and Doug. Yeah, this is, this is obviously a dynamic operation. One of the first things we do is make sure there aren't essentially poisonous fumes around the capsule. So uh, something like this just really can endanger the whole thing, endanger the crew members and endanger themselves. So uh, the SpaceX team is moving in to try and get them away so they can safely recover the Dragon capsule and get Bob and Doug on deck and safely inside their medical quarters. So we can see them, they're getting a lot closer. Uh, we expect uh, about 10 minutes or so until they should be in position. Uh, all the rigging has been affixed on the Dragon capsule. And once they arrive, they'll be able to use that hydraulic lift to get Dragon up and out of the water. So the recovery vessel Go Navigator is getting closer and closer to Dragon Endeavor as it awaits its recovery, f or as it awaits to be hoisted out of the Gulf of Mexico. Again, we landed just off the coast of Florida near Pensacola. Maybe next time we shouldn't announce our landing zone. <laughs> oh, there we got a shot from our WB-57 plane. It looks like that area has cleared out significantly, so that is good to see.
And we're also hearing that all of the parachutes have buoys on them, so also good news uh, as the recovery process continues for SpaceX Demo 2. Dragon SpaceX for Com Reconfig. Go ahead, Mike. Hey, Doug, we're about to uh, reconfigure the forward link. We uh, may lose that for about one or so minutes, uh, and that should happen shortly. Copy. Yeah, just give us a call back when you think we got it back. Will do.